Hello everybody, Bill Harrison here with Harden Power Systems. Real excited to, uh, to, to finally make uh, an introduction video I've been wanting to make for some time. Uh, some of you people might be familiar with a product that, uh, that we introduced a few years ago um, called a Revolt. The, uh, the Revolt uh, represented the, uh, the, the first armored battery system that we produced. And it was unique um, and maybe a bit audacious. The, the Revolt was, uh, uh, was waterproof and crushproof. And, uh, uh, you know, we don't say that lightly. There, the, the, uh, there's videos out there of the Revolt getting driven over by trucks. I, I know that one got driven over by an MRAP. Um, uh, and, 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 you know, they continued to function. Um, uh, videos of, uh, of the revolt being frozen into a block of ice while it was on, still running, and then uh, the ice was, was smashed and the revolt was intact and still running. Uh, we still have some of the original revolts in, uh, in Indonesia, uh, 30 feet under uh, uh, salt water, running our long shot systems. Um, suffice to say, the revolt was... Uh, was was pretty significant. Um, it was uh, a lot of fun. It was very difficult to build. Uh, it took a lot of time on the bench and a, and a fair amount of, of skill, um, uh, almost some art to put those things together. Um, and uh, I have been trying to be patient as I've been waiting and researching and and uh, and we've been designing and tinkering uh, for the right battery chemistry and battery form factor to be uh, readily available at a reasonable price to allow us to, uh, to come up with, with the next generation revolt. Now I would caution you, we are not claiming waterproofness or crushproofness. That's not what this device is. Um, uh, one of the lessons, frankly, that I learned was that as cool as it was to have something that you really could like drive a tank over, um, your average person wasn't necessarily going to pay for something with that capability uh, since they probably weren't going to need it. Um, what, we've, what we've been able to do here with what we are calling the Revolt G2 is take advantage of some excellent battery chemistry, which is LifePo4. LifePo4 is lithium iron ferrophosphate. Um, it is, in my opinion, uh, probably the single most impressive battery chemistry that is available today, 2016, to the consumer in a uh, in a form uh, that that is 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 usable, is reliable. Um, there's enough factories making uh, that technology now that the competition is healthy. The market is global for sure. Um, our juice box Mark II uh, uses uh, LifePo4 prismatic batteries. Um, uh, LifePo4 probably is uh, well. It's 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 a bit of a balance. You know, everything is a compromise when you're talking about technology. Um, LifePo4 is not as impressive as say uh, lithium ion when it comes to the physical dimensions of the battery and the uh, energy contained. Um, lithium ion frankly is better if you look strictly at uh, energy versus size. Now the LifePo4 excels when you're talking about weight per energy and life cycle. These batteries, uh, like in, in the new Revolt, this battery bank, you should expect well over 1,000 charge cycles. Um, you might reasonably just kind of assume that that's kind of a lifetime battery, depending on how you used it. Um, now that said, the batteries are replaceable. Um, not, uh, probably not by the consumer, but very easily by us. Um, and, uh, and we do that sort of thing very reasonably. Um, but uh, the, the, the LifePo4 is non-toxic, non-explosive, phenomenal lifespan, very, very low self-discharge. 
um, that's one of the things that uh, that I think is significant. You're talking about being able to charge the system, leave it on the shelf um, for months, perhaps not a year, but uh, many months, and have the system uh, very nearly fully charged. Um, it's the same characteristic that our customers uh, like, among other things, about our Juice Box Mark II. Um, it has similar characteristics. In any event, um, let's talk, I guess, specifically about this device. Um, the LifePo 4 battery bank is four and a half amp hours. Um, and that's, uh, that's measured at the nominal 12.8 volts. Now, you get into some stuff that, uh, it, it's unfortunate, but there's, it's very easy to, uh, to advertise deceptively when you're talking about stored energy. Um, one of the reasons is because it's just flat confusing. You know, unless you had a reason to really know uh, what you were looking at, uh, amps, milliamps, um, amp hours, watt hours, volts. Uh, uh, suffice to say that the most honest way to describe stored energy when you're talking about DC uh, is in watt hours. A battery like this one um, is uh, 58 watt hours. Um, once you know watt hours, then you can calculate. Uh, anticipated runtime based on whatever your voltage or amperage needs are. Um, suffice to say that if we want to take a cue from the people that are trying to impress you with numbers, then we'd say it's 11 and a half amp hours. That's a little deceptive though because that number here we're showing it in milliamp hours, which just makes it look more impressive. It's not a bigger number. It's 11,500 milliamp hours um, or 11.5 amp hours, right? So that's one of the first ways that, uh, that people will play tricks with the numbers. Um, the other thing is that we can say that this is 11 and a half amp hours because we're saying it's at five volts DC. Uh, the lower the voltage, the greater the, the corresponding uh, uh, amp hours. So in any event, if you're going to compare this to something you might buy that's advertised as a USB charger, then think of it as 11.5 amp hours. If you're going to compare it to a 12 volt battery, then think of it as 4.5 amp hours. And I don't mean to be confusing. I think most of you people understand what I'm talking about and hopefully kind of appreciate the transparency. Um, so we've done some neat things here. Uh, this is a lot more than just a battery. Uh, it is uh, it's a LifePo 4 battery that uh, when you do it correctly, the battery has a, uh, a, uh, a battery control circuit. Um, and this does, it's built inside. The control circuit will protect the battery from over discharge, over charging, and short circuits. Um, and it definitely extends the, the, the life of the bank. Um, it adds some cost, it adds some complexity, but it's the right way to do it. And uh, believe me, when you're spending this kind of money on just the internal battery, uh, it makes sense to go the extra mile and make sure that you're protecting that bank. Um, to put it into perspective, our bill of materials on this device, we take all the components, uh, the battery itself, just the the naked battery from the factory, costs significantly more than every other component combined, including assembly time. The batteries are expensive. Now that said, most people who know what they're talking about will say that a LifePo 4 battery is the smartest investment as it relates to how much you actually pay for how much energy you actually wind up being able to recycle through that battery. And that's primarily due to the impressive lifespan. That built-in solar controller and charge controller will handle up to 36 watts of solar. So it's really quite elegant. It means that you can plug into this female coax a solar panel or the DC wall power supply. Um, that's to say that the common type of solar panels that people are buying now off 
like Amazon and eBay and so forth. The little folding solar panels, panels like our 28 watt solar panel um, that are becoming increasingly common with the uh, with the DC barrel, barrel plug, um, just plug it right in. Uh, our 28 watt panel, for example, uh, would charge this from dead to full in less than three hours of sunlight. Um, and the system can be used while it's being charged, whether that's from AC or from a solar panel. Um, the uh, exterior, this is a very thick um, uh, rubber. The end caps are high impact ABS that we manufacture here on our 3D printers. Um, and uh, there's no need to get into it too much, but I'm pretty pleased with the way these end caps are designed. You'd almost have to to uh, look in, in in the computer in the, in the in the CAD system to appreciate, but these these are not just shells. It's actually very nearly a solid, um, uh, it, it incredibly strong. Uh, the uh, the front of the system has a, a power switch that's protected by a stainless steel eye strap. Um, the eye strap serves a couple of purposes. It protects the faceplate from from bumps and knocks. It provides a, a tether point, obviously, an attachment, whether you need to secure the system or you want to attach a tag or something to it. Um, and then it also serves to protect that master switch from being bumped accidentally, whether that's on or off. So in any event, if we turn this on, you see the standing voltage of the battery. And it's pretty common for LifePo 4s to at a full charge be well above the nominal voltage which in this case is 12.8 um, it's to be expected to see a little more than uh, than the battery is actually rated at especially when it's at a, a completely full charge so on the front panel here we've got the voltmeter we have two Anderson power poles those are arranged in the standard Aries races format uh, these allow put a, a individual or combined six amps which is a pretty impressive amount of DC power. That's, uh, that's a lot of juice. The USB drivers are actually individual power supplies. Each one is independent and separate. Each one pushes up to three amps, very powerful. Um, because they are actually uh, independent power supplies, there is a phantom load associated with that, meaning that if the USB drivers were turned on when you turned on the main switch, even if you weren't using them, if they were simply powered up, there's a small load, uh, some energy lost uh, by virtue of them simply being on. Because of that, there's a separate power switch that is for the USB only. And you see that verbiage here. But if I flip this switch on, now the USB drivers are, are active as well. Um, so the front panel, eye strap, master on off switch, USB drivers, Anderson power poles. The rear panel, DC coax in, that's the 5.5 by 2.1 for AC charging or solar. Um, we've got some important specs here. Um, and uh, we've also got uh, some nice beefy rubber feet on the back side. Uh, same thing as far as uh, the eye strap protecting uh, the front. These rubber feet will protect the back from accidental drops and so forth. Um, obviously it also gives you a nice way to stand it up if that's the way you want to run the machine. Um, uh, definitely, although, uh, you know, like I said, the original Revolt was was essentially literally crush proof. This is not um, but uh, I'm very comfortably calling it uh, an armored battery system. Uh, you'd have to almost like see it and hold it and mess around with it to appreciate. Uh, this thing is going to tolerate a lot of abuse and uh, be none the worse for it. Um, I suppose that's it. Um, it's just really nice to be able to finally come up with, uh, with the new G2. Um, so it'll, uh, it'll be on our website. Again, it's the Revolt G2 LifePo 4 Armored Battery System. We'd love to build you one.